after we place the plate and then we start our uh, setting of the teeth both serial teeth make sure you soften the wax fully up to the base blade to ensure that the tooth can fit fully and you don't straight away start trimming of the tooth so make sure you soften the wax fully before you start putting your tooth the first premolar angulation should be long axis of the tooth perpendicular to the occlusal plate and the buccal cusp of the premolar touching the occlusal plate the palatal cusp is not touching it's slightly off just a slight off of the occlusal plate we have to make sure the buccal cusp is touching the plate and inside you can see the palatal cusp is slightly off and the angulation as I said is perpendicular to the plate this is perpendicular to the plate and premolar post cusp are touching the occlusal plate and as well the axis the long axis is perpendicular to the occlusal plate again you soften your wax fully to the base blade you can feel that by touching it by your wax knife then you place your second premolar make sure both cusps are touching the occlusal plate and the long axis is perpendicular to the occlusal plate secure your teeth after you put them in the right position and you've checked the cusps then you straight away secure them with a little bit of soft wax after that you make sure you have enough space for the very smaller because it's a big tooth so you cut your wax to the right size and make sure you soften it fully the first premolar has four cusps three of them the very smaller three cusp of these tooth they are not supposed to touch the occlusal plate only the mesial palatal cusp mesial palatal cusp of the tooth which is the largest cusp this one must be this cusp must touch the occlusal plate the rest of the cusps are not touching and is following the curve of its B which is going this way you will see that when I finish the full setting of this side you can see the curve of its B going up none of the cusps touching the plate buckley and you can check from the back side as well to see whether the mesial palatal cusp is touching see from the back you see from the back of the articulator you go with your second molar it has four cusps none of these cusps are touching the plate I can see that this tooth is slightly high although I removed all the wax and I'm up to the base blade but I can see is higher that definitely need trimming from the back when I say trimming of the back I mean the back of the tooth the area where it's going to go 
to the base blade never trim anything from the cusps trim from the back and you have to follow the same shape of the tooth you can see the tooth from the back is being curved so you have to follow that with the number written of the tooth and do not trim where you cut most of the teeth you will destroy your teeth what you have to do just follow the curvature already on the tooth from the back side this is how you trim your teeth it's from the back and you have to follow the shape the buckle side most of the time we avoid trimming it because it will show from the buckle side so we have to leave it as it is and follow the curvature exists from the tooth previously when you place your tooth you have to make sure you follow the cave of his B and as I said none of the cusps are touching You can see that obvious none of these cusps are touching they are slightly up not too much up from the occlusal plate it's slightly about one millimeter one to two maximum away from the occlusal plate not more than that and it's a cave going up you can see the teeth are going from here as if it's going on this line also you can notice that is obviously these are our tuprosity as we said we do not put any teeth in the tuprosity and we have a mark over here i can see it but it's not in pencil this is was the end of the tuprosity the anterior line of the tuprosity this is where we have to stop our teeth setting start the setting of the mandibular teeth now we will start with the molar six the very smaller the tooth number six we starting with this tooth because we call it the key of occlusion. When we setting the teeth for the lower, the mesial cusp, mesial buccal cusp of the tooth must fit in the fossa between the ferris molar and the second premolar of the maxillary arch. I will show you now when I put it, you will see exactly what I'm saying. This is the place of the ferris molar of the mandibular teeth. The mesial cusp, mesial palatal cusp of the maxillary must fit in the fossa of the lower tooth. So when I'm closing, you can see that it's clearly. Second key we have to look at the mesial buckle of the upper molar must fit in the groove of the lower molar. So make sure you do that and you make sure this fits correctly. You can use the red wax or the pink wax and secure it in place. Then start softening the wax for the second molar. You can also push the tooth from the back, the lingual side, and you can see the interdigitation, centric occlusion is happening. Always check your vertical dimension. Before you go to set the premolars, open your art articulator and try to secure the teeth from the inner side 
or from the lingual side close your arctic again and look from the inside if you see any gap between the teeth make sure you lift the teeth with the wax knife to get into centric occlusion fully with the upper teeth then add a bit of wax to secure them more now we're going to put the second lower premolar as i said before please when you pick up your teeth make sure you pick in the right side so the slope from the cusp medially is higher and shorter than the slope from the cusp distally so you have to differentiate between the sides because if you put them in the wrong side you will confuse yourself and you will not get the right occlusion and right interdigitation between the teeth. When you place the tooth in place, check it as well from the inner side. It's nicely fitting into occlusion and buccal as well. The last tooth we're going to fit is the first premolar and if there is another advantage we started with the first molar because if there is no enough space then we can trim the first premolar because the six is the key of occlusion and it has to sit in the right place fully so if we have enough space for the rest is fine if it's not then we can trim this tooth there is no harm of doing that from mesial and distal side to get it into place If it fits nicely, then we are okay. If it's too short, uh, too big, then we can trim it. But it looks like it's fine, very nice. After you do that, you just add more wax and wait for it till it's fully set before you start moving it around. Otherwise it will move because this wax is too soft. This is exactly how you do your setting and get the teeth in synthetic occlusion. You're going to do the same to the other side. As we said, we have to start with the lower first molar and then you go to the second lower molar then you go to the first, second premolar, then you go to the first premolar. The last tooth to set is the first premolar. Check the teeth from inside all the time and get, make sure it fits nicely into occlusion. And you get the maximum intercuspation between the upper and the lower teeth and your pin touching the table before you start the other side of your setting. When you finish your setting, please make sure the lines are in the correct place. We will start with the lower. So this line 
the crest of the ridge coincides with the central fossa of, of the posterior teeth. Okay, and the line we made here, the anterior line of the retromolar bat, must be in line with the end of the second molar of the lower posterior tooth. Yeah. These two lines, we will get it checked. Upper calf, we have to make sure the tips of the palatal cusp in line with the mark for the crest of the ridge on the upper arch. Also, the side line we made here, the anterior line of the tuberosity, we have to make sure this line coincides with the end of the second upper molar. I hope this video was beneficial for everyone. If you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.